Well, it's a battle of the light blues today as Melbourne City host Sydney FC. Hello and welcome to Kingston Heath Reserve as the Liberty A-League Saturday fixtures get underway with a battle of third against second. For Melbourne City, the equation is simple. Win and they'll secure finals football. Sydney, meanwhile, need 10 points from their final four games to secure their third Premier's plate in a row. A title that, interestingly, was last held by their opponents today, back in 2019-20. And we are underway at Kingston Heath. Melbourne City, if they win today, their finals position will be secured. And Sydney FC looking to stave off that challenge from Western United for the Premiership title as Princess Abini already bursting forward. She's got options in the middle if she can find them. Abini back post! And Sydney FC comes so close to instantly taking the lead. Look, this is where we're going to see Melbourne City's defence really be tested. You've had Naomi Chinema. She's been out for a few weeks with a hamstring injury. We're looking here, very, very strong by Abini. Stepped across. Chinema's just not quick enough. Across the face of goal. Would have probably been better if that was a little bit lower. But um, we're looking forward to the battle here. Torvi with the throw. McKenna just getting there just ahead of Rachel Lowe. Rachel Lowe, three goals this season coming in quite a flurry towards the end of the season. She's taken up central striker duties. Now Melbourne City, Holly McNamara, what can she produce? Cleared away just about another opportunity now. Gallic saved! Wonderful save from Jada Wyman on her return from injury. Denied the 16-year-old. And she, what would have been a wonderful goal. And she then just picked up a yellow for a, a smart professional foul. Could have been a lot worse for her. Um, but if we look at this again, great initial ball by Torpy, uh, not Torpy, Hallie McNamara, and she's tried to put this in the bottom corner. That's a great attempt there by Galich. Great save by Jada Wynum. She got herself back into position, knowing that the other angle was shut down, and she's covered that post. It was absolutely beautiful. Hawksy's absolutely copped one here. So Galich is now that she's on warning for the rest of the game. McKenna, Torpy. Up the line, McNamara. Well, looking for Rojas Bulls, just escaped her. She does recover. All the way back to Torpy, Rojas. Chinema's come up to be an option as well. Oh, a nutmeg from Rojas. That's the technical ability of the Chilean veteran. Wins her side at corner. Oh, I'll tell you what, Riley, as a defender, I could think of nothing more scary than seeing <laughs> Rojas in front of me. Oh, uh, look, Rojas, she is such a technical player, and this is where she's going to win you these little opportunities, and you need to capitalise on that. McKenna once again on set piece duties today has the short option in Rojas. Launch it into the box, headed away. Now Tobin doing defensive duties again, the captain. And now you can hear the cries of go, go, go from Ante Urich. Courtney Vine in some space against Grosso. Courtney Vine oh. makes it 1-0 for Sydney. That straight line speed of Courtney Vine in behind the Melbourne City defence. And the defending champions take the lead. Defending premiers, in fact. And this is what we absolutely said was going to happen. Beautiful ball through and Courtney Vine with her pace. Admittedly, Grosso's done exceptionally well there, but this is where you want your strikers to finish in bottom corner. Sally James should have done better there though. Yes, it is a one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, it is a well-finished goal, but that's very close to her and she should have been able to get down to the ground quicker. Yeah, and that's the Courtney Vine that we've grown accustomed to in the last few seasons. The Courtney Vine that's become a regular starter in the Matildas lineup. But now Rojas immediately streaming forward Rojas and wins a foul in a dangerous position. You certainly cannot relax against Melbourne City with their attacking riches. 
And this is when you've got someone like Rojas, who's very, very good on the ball. And look, unfortunately, there's a swipe for a ball there, completely missed. Yes, it's, you know, a very light foul, but it's still a stock standard professional foul there. Now, this is a great opportunity for Melbourne City to get themselves back into this game and this contest. Looks like McKenna's going to be taking it as well. well certainly shooting range now, an opportunity for Antisha McKenna to score her third goal of the season. Her sixth in the A-League women's. Natisha McKenna, she'll line this free kick up. Five Sydney players in the wall. McKenna! Just high and wide. And Melbourne City, well, a golden opportunity to equalise. Squandered on that occasion. This wasn't a bad attempt at all. Putting this up over the wall just wasn't quite low enough, but a great attempt. Now they come again. Galich, Rojas, Rojas into the penalty area. Oh, expertly done by Sydney FC's defence, showing again why they are the best defence in the league this season. Long ball from Wyman and Vine into the space again. Courtney Vine 1v1. Sally James does very well to get out and cut out that opportunity. She has to be so alert with the speed of Vine up top. Vine coming so close to making it a brace. That was excellent by Sally James. She knew that she needed to be off her line in that point. I mean, Courtney Vines tried to do the right thing as we've seen in the replay. She tried to go around the keeper, but Sally James commanded that box. Now Sydney FC come again. Rachel low from distance. Wow, oh, James was scrambling. And Rachel low just wide. She's had opportunities from that position a couple times in this game, and this time it very nearly came off. And Sydney FC with an opportunity to keep some possession of their own. There is Rojas back on the pitch, so good to see her up and running. We can see where Melbourne City are really starting to show their cracks, and that's at their left and right defensively. And it's not because of the players, but it's because of the gaps of space, because they are playing with a back three and with two wing backs. And this is where Sydney FC are finding favour. And the green ball into the box, header from Lowe, saved! Sally James, excellent save from the young goalkeeper. Has really stepped up where she's needed to there. Anna Green, a wonderful ball for Rachel Lowe, denied her fourth of the season. Rachel Lowe has positioned herself so well there. She's sitting in between the defenders, off their shoulders, so she's somewhat in their blind side, particularly Emma Checkers. Green's putting a perfectly weighted ball and so unfortunate not to capitalise on that. But well done by Sally James. McKenna, long diagonal. McNamara, what a wonderful touch from Holly McNamara. She's streaming forward here, the young so McNamara releases. Rojas, Rojas to equalise! And saved away. Mackenzie Hawksby getting back in time to save the day for her side. What a wonderful run from Holly McNamara and so close to a city equaliser. The ball out to Rojas is perfect. And look, I'm going to be very frank here. Look, she should have been really, really selfish there. Rojas should have had that on her left foot and that should have been going in the far back corner. But great run by Hawksby. Absolutely perfect. That's the desperation you want to see from your players. Dagnall looking for Wilkinson cut out. And there was a fantastic video released from Melbourne City featuring Holly McNamara and Rihanna Policina last week. And Sydney FC drive forward, ball in the gloves of Sally James. And that video was in fact shot and produced by Caitlin Torpy, who's playing as right wing back today. So always wonderful to see these little glimpses of behind the scenes. Now Julia Grosso unleashes from distance. 
the American just over the crossbar. We've seen that a few times today. And just outside of the frame of the goal. Grosso showing what Melbourne City have done well this season. They're driving runs with the vast majority of their goals being scored outside the box. But at the same time, you've got Sydney FC who have conceded the least amount of goals from outside the box. So we've got an even contention here. But I would not go astray to say that there's going to be a goal from outside by Melbourne City at some point if they keep this up. You don't want to look away because at any moment, one of these long shots you know can just fly into the back of the net. Wilkinson ball taken off her, ball into the box. Rachel Lowe lurking, Hawksby long shot, deflected away. Chinema doing well to get in the way. Holman. And for Devine. And McNamara down again in back play, really struggling here. The youngster, but it is Sydney driving forward. Vine, a ball across, a beanie post. Chinema, wonderful defensive cover. Did just enough to get back and head the ball onto the post. Sally James able to collect. And that is the fine margins we are working with in this game. You can see the frustration from the Melbourne City bench between Dario and Alex Smith. They just want their teams to take a bit of composure. Well, it's half time at Kingston Heath Reserve. An end to end battle of two teams who are not taking a backward step. A goal to Courtney Vine means that at half time, it's Melbourne City zero and Sydney FC one. We are underway in the second half. Sydney FC leading through Courtney Vine. And Melbourne City still plenty of opportunities in it. And an enthralling second half awaits. Melbourne City and Melbourne City style will start us off by playing out from the back. They'll be pressed by Sydney. We'll see a long diagonal. McNamara, good to see her back on the park in this second half. Still going, McNamara. Rojas. The ball played through to Jada Wyman's feet. Jada Wyman, influential in the first half, made one cracking save when the scores were still locked at nil all. And Sydney FC with the ball once more. Rojas gave Holly a very difficult ball to deal with there. It was a bit of a rocket around the hip height. So she's done well, all things considered. But Sydney FC have me on the edge of my seat right now. The beautiful one touches, the passages of play. It's almost inevitable that something is brewing here. You can feel the tension in the air at Kingston Heath Reserve. Wilkinson, neat little one two with Rojas. Across to McNamara. Nice touch. She looked to go one more, McNamara, but unable to find Galich. Cut out well by that organised Sydney FC defence. And you can see just then from Sydney FC playing out a oh, beanie. A beanie with an opportunity. Princess Abini played through neatly from Vine. A beanie to make it two. Side netting. Princess Abini played through a wonderful ball from Courtney Vine. Oh, just beautifully weighted, slip between the defenders. And look, Sally James has done well. She's come out. She wasn't necessarily in the best position, but she sent a beanie wide enough to make the angle almost impossible to take a proper shot from. The question is, should have a beanie just put a foot on the ball, hold it up there and wait for someone to come along? But the warning signs are there. We're getting closer and closer. It's great to see the youngsters coming through the game and a lot of the clubs are starting to, you know, they involve them. They don't expect them to play out full games or have large amount of times because they're, they're trying to foster their development in the right way. Torpy, McNamara, unleashes McNamara! Requires a good save from Wyman. Well, saw an opportunity for a shot and took it. Wyman equal to it. Oh, 
Grosso. Plays it back. We'll see a replay of this opportunity. And it's just Holly showing what she does. She can turn on a dime. She's taken it with the left foot, opened up her body. And at the same time, she was able to drive it from a short step. It's what she does best. And it's great to see her have the confidence to do that again. Katie Bowen looking for options. Through midfield, Wilkinson. McKenna out wide to Galich, whose touch gets away from her a little bit, does recover. Grosso. And all the way back once more. Sydney intercept. They'll look to do a fast counter. Low. Hawksby. Options in front of her. Finds a beanie. Who's got no one with her here, Abini? So she'll go herself. Abini! Oh, wonderful cutback from Princess Abini. And that would have been quite something had that fight found itself oh, underneath look. the crossbar. It's Abini doing what Abini does best. Every now and then, she just pulls something out of the bread basket like this. And this is what she does. She touches, takes one step on the inside and she lets rip. And it's typically hitting those cobweb areas. Torpy against Abini. Play it back instead. The safer option. Rojas intercepted by Tobin. And Sydney FC are finding it quite easy to play out and play through that midfield. If you see here, they're just free. There's no there's no discipline from the centre three that, you know, you don't have your six, you don't have your tens holding their positions. And Sydney can play it around this easy. Low well, laying it off to Hunter, who's been busy today. Sarah Hunter, perhaps her breakout season in this campaign and showing again today why she is so... Highly rated by so many. 100% agree. Sarah Hunter has definitely had a season that she may not be raved about, but what she does is she's a very humble player and she goes about her business. And that's what she brings to Sydney. She brings that stability in that midfield. Well, four goals this season for Hunter, but doesn't just bring goals, brings midfield energy as well. Now, Sydney, oh, beautiful ball through. Rachel Lowe, 1v1 and Sally James. Lowe, James saved. Very good work from the young keeper. Did everything right in the 1v1. Just opened up for Rachel Lowe. She always had too much time, didn't quite know what to do with it. And James, a very smart save with her legs. Uh, look, this is what Sydney FC have had a few of these opportunities and Sally James has come out and on both occasions, look, there Rachel Lowe needed to make the decision. You either take the shot one step earlier or you round around the keeper. Neat little one-two with Wilkinson. But Sydney FC, as they have done all game really, just able to get bodies in the way. And this is where we're going to see a beanie running onto the ball, but she's been called offside by the looks of, by not cr checking across the line. So by looking at this, it looks like Caitlin Torphy sat back a little bit deeper now so that Chelsea Blissett can bomb on. Checker in some space herself, the centre back. Ball aimed at Wilkinson. Wilkinson not able to get the required touch, although does win her side a corner kick. It's crunch time. Dario needs to start bombing these players on and go from going for a more attacking structure. He needs the points. He's got Melbourne victory knocking on his door. Corner in from McKenna. Crossbar. Both teams appealing. You can see Captain Emma Checker believes that Wyman got a touch on the way through. And for just a moment, it looks like we may have been close to seeing an Olympico rally. Oh, I've never heard that term until this season. I'll tell you what, it annoys me. That's just a corner that's gone AWOL. 
<laughs> now Briley Henry, the substitute. McNamara. She's got players in front of her, McNamara. Ball comes to Ocado, who stays with the ball, but Rule eventually comes away with it. Never quite had that ball under control there, Isabella Ocado. And now Vine, dangerous for Melbourne City. Courtney Vine streaming forward. She's got low, goes herself, Courtney Vine! Saved! Sally James, wonderful! From the 20-year-old. A top draw save from Melbourne City's keeper. She keeps them in the game. Courtney Vine did exactly what I've been asking for. She's dummy, she's gone on the left, and she look, she has placed that quite well. Great save by Sally James to keep her team just in the game. They needed that, and hopefully they can take some confidence. They've definitely had that success down that left-hand side, which with the way the wind is going as well it's really helping them in their favor even when it comes from a clearance perspective we've seen how strong it is it's it's kept that ball being pushed back city blissett driving forward and cleared by della half appeals by the city bench not sure what for bowen ball played back to her katie bowen Still going here, Katie Bowen deciding to go herself. Appeals for a foul, waved away by referee Anna Marie Cayley. Torpy, what can she produce here? Played to Wilkinson, who laid off to Emma Checker. Into the box, header and oh, so nearly an own goal for Sydney FC. Jada Wyman in no man's land. The ball coming off the head of Deborah Ann De La Harp and almost flying into the back of the net. That's one that just send chills down your spine when you're when you're one of your own players does that and your keepers off their line because you're not quite sure where it's going. And with that wind, it's really been dragged along. Blissett in swinging corner from Chelsea. Blissett! <laughs> Melbourne City equalise! Caitlin Torby at the back post! Kingston Heath, a late, late equaliser. And Riley Dobson, what a result for Melbourne City. This was a beautiful floated in corner. And look, Caitlin Torpy's done exactly what you want from players at back stick. You start in close and you check off and you put anything that you get you can onto that ball because you're not quite sure where it's going to ricochet. Credit to Sydney FC. They still had players on their post, but it was just in between. This is game on. And full time at Kingston Heath Reserve. Both sets of players down on their haunches. At full time, it's Melbourne City 1, Sydney FC 1.